Hey guys, I'm Faustina Gorham. I don't know who it is that I'm talking to right now, but I know that we have a lot in common. Uh, I mean, most of the people who are listening to this video right now are probably Catholic because this video is going to be posted to a Catholic YouTube channel, but maybe you're listening to this video and you're not Catholic. Maybe you're listening to this video and you don't affiliate with any kind of religion. Maybe you don't know what you believe, um, but I do know that we have a lot in common. Even though we may disagree on a lot of things, I know that we have one very, very deep and real thing in common, and that is that we are brothers and sisters of the human family, and you and I are going through a really, really hard time in the world right now. Um, and we're in this together. Um, I think I want to start by sharing an experience that I had uh, near, near the ending of my junior year in college. Um, I had recently, yeah, had an experience where God had really, really awakened me to his presence. And I had all these experiences of just like his love and like surrendering to him and just like freedom. And so now I, I was talking to him a lot and I was, yeah, praying a lot. And uh, this thing started to happen uh, when this was around like February, January, February of 2020. Um, this thing started to happen where I would, I would see things like I would see, see or hear just like people talking about um, how we are in the end times. Um, and it just kind of seemed to come up a lot. And I, I would pray about it. And it had to do with like prophecies, prophecies of like, like Marian apparitions of Marian, Mary, Mary has been coming to appear to us um, in these past like hundred years or so and telling us that we're in end times basically. Um, and I didn't really know about this before. Um, at least maybe if I heard people talking about it, I just kind of thought they were like, yeah, whatever. Uh, but this time, for whatever reason, I started to listen to it and I started to think, hmm, I wonder if maybe we are. And I started to ask Jesus if we really were. And I was a little afraid to like be listening to these people because I was like, oh, I don't want to be, you know, going cuckoo or anything. And so I was telling Jesus and trusting him that like, yeah, if this is real, if this is legitimate, then please show me. And and if it's not, then also please show me. Um, yeah. So I remember one day this was, I think this was in March of 2020. Um, I, I decided to pray a rosary with the intention, the specific intention, that um, that night, I was going to go to Mass that night on a Thursday, and my specific rosary intention was that that night, during communion, Jesus would give me a sign so that I would know, is it really true? Are we in end times or not? The apocalypse. Uh, for those who don't know, by, by end times, by apocalypse, I'm referring to like the the, the chapters in Revelation where it talks about the, the Antichrist and the beast and the false prophet and all this stuff like persecuting the Christians and and then there's the mark of the beast and a bunch of people die and then there's a thousand year reign of peace and people get raised from the dead and all this kind of thing. You know, a crazy fairy tale. Um, not really. But I mean, <laughs> anyway, totally unthinkable to, to actually think I could be alive during this time. Like, goodness gracious, that's something I always dreamed of when I was a kid. Like, to be alive during a cool time. Anyway, I'm getting so off track. <laughs> I prayed a rosary with the intention that God would give me a sign to know if I was really living in the end times or not. And it was, yeah, specifically during communion. So after I received communion at mass that night at my Newman Center, uh, I I was praying and I was, I was just closing my eyes and I was burying my head and I was really, really con concentrating on Jesus in my mouth right now, like, I was listening to him so hard and I was just so certain that he was going to tell me and give me a sign of if we're really living in the end times or not. And um, I was listening super, super hard and minutes went by and minutes went by. And then I just told him, Jesus, this music is so loud. I can't even like concentrate because the music was really, really loud um, <laughs> that they were singing. And I, yeah, I told him that. And then I kind of instantly, as soon as I said that, uh, he said, well, well, why don't you, it wasn't like he spoke to me. I'm not like, I didn't like hear his voice, but it's like, I felt him. I felt these words come to me immediately. Like, well, listen to the lyrics of the song and that will be like your, your answer. And so I was like, oh, okay. Um, 
so immediately I, I, I started to listen to the lyrics of the song that they were singing and they were singing Amazing Grace. Um, they were on one of like the last verses. And, but as soon as I, li I started listening to the lyrics of the song for, for a specific sign of if it's really true that we're living in end times or not, I kid you not, the lyrics instantly changed to, or they reached a point in the song, which I didn't know, where it says the world will soon dissolve like snow. Um, and then I was like, like my jaw literally dropped. I was like, oh. <laughs> I couldn't believe like what a clear sign that was. Anyway, I thought it was really cool. Um, so then I was like really, really excited because <laughs> I'm a little bit crazy and I think it's really cool to be alive during really hard times. Uh, Cause it's like, we're in a movie. It's like Narnia. Uh, you know, a little bit different, but anyway, <laughs> uh, yeah, that happened. And then literally days later, I, I went on spring break, you know, to Disney world with my best friend, Stephanie. And, um, <laughs> uh, when we were there, they, they called and they, the school, well, the school emailed and they, they canceled school forever. Well, for, for the, for the next few months because of COVID this global pandemic and all that, it was crazy. They shut down Disney world. They shut down everything. Like they shut down masses at the Vatican. Like, and I was just like, Oh my gosh, this is like a confirmation. Um, yeah. So that's kind of an introduction. And basically ever since then, ever since March of 2020, uh, I, I have known and believed like, that Jesus has been letting me know that like, we are actually living in end times. Like we're going into the times of the apocalypse. And back then I didn't really know what that meant. I was really excited. <laughs> like um, I kind of assumed it would be just the end of the world. Um, which I mean, isn't really that bad because we'll just like go to heaven. Right. Um, but yeah, the whole thing, like the antichrist, Mark of the beast, like getting martyred and all that stuff. And, maybe hiding away. I don't know. I, I was, I, all of these dreams, these daydreams just started coming to my head and I was like, I can't believe this is my life right now. This is the coolest thing ever. Um, yeah, I'm a little weird anyway. <laughs> yeah. So I thought it was just the end of the world, but it was, it was a few months later that I was introduced to the writings of, uh, the servant of God, Luisa Picaretta. And when I say servant of God, that's basically Catholic terms for when somebody is on the process of becoming a saint, being declared a saint uh, officially by the Vatican. Um, like one of the stages of that process is their first call to servant of God. Um, so, yeah, I was I was introduced to her writings. That's a whole other story. But basically, they transformed my whole life and they were everything I ever wanted. Um, but basically, um, what I learned through these writings um, is that. Yeah, the end, so the apocalypse, what happens in the book of Revelation, um, and actually a lot of early um, Catholic church fathers, a vast majority of them believed that actually what Revelation, the book of Revelation really was, was not talking about the end of time, the end of the whole world, when it talks about the time of the, the Antichrist and the false prophet and the mark of the beast and all that, um, but really that period of darkness leads into a glorious era of peace, which is symbolically referred to in the book of Revelation as a thousand year reign of peace. And so, and after that time, which it may be literally a thousand years, it may not be. And I mean, truly in the end, only the father really knows the exact day. But um, after this glorious reign of peace is when the end of the world comes. And so I realized that what we are going into right now um, is is the is the apocalypse and it is a really really dark time but it's not the end of the world um it's the end of an era and it's the end of a dark era and the beginning of a glorious era unlike anything the world has ever seen um and we're about to see it i drew some diagrams i really like doing that i'm a visual visual learner but i i drew some diagrams of just like some things that i have learned um things that i have picked up uh a lot of this is from Luisa's writings, which, by the way, have been, um, they have all, all of her writings have been given the Nile Obstat by the Vatican, which means that no error has been found. Like, she's been thoroughly, like, searched through and found to be, like, um, a saintly, like, person. And basically, what I'm, what I want to express in this is, like, just because she's not a canonized saint yet, like, it doesn't mean that 
it's dangerous to read her writings because actually the church has said like we can't like we can we can safely read these and it, it's fine this is the understanding that i have come to um i have drawn it out so this is about the times that we are in right now the first source that i want to start with is from scripture actually um and there's there's other biblical scholars who have done like research on this and have found that this this type of pattern of seeing scripture in this way of seeing the time that like we've lived in this way is is very compatible with scripture but anyway uh a day to god is as a thousand years um so basically the way that the way that i see it the pattern that is happening right now is that there are seven days uh in a week and on the seventh day what happens is that god rests and if we go back in time so this right here this right here is when when jesus came to the earth um and then this is 1000 bc 2000 bc 3000 bc 4000 bc um this is when time was made this is the creation of adam and the fall in the garden and then like symbolically 1000 years uh would be like a day then 2000 years would be another day then day three day four day five and this is something really special because this is when jesus came uh day six which is actually where we are right now because we're and of course this isn't like totally exact but uh yeah estimated <laughs> we're around 2000 ad and what's coming next is the seventh day this is the day that god rested and then after the seventh day is the end of time but we're not focused on that right now like what we are heading into where we are in time right now <laughs> is we're heading into the seventh day rest um where god rested um and where man will rest as well um so that's something really exciting i drew another chart that is based not just like scripturally but also this is this is all found in luisa's writings in particular uh luisa picaretta the little daughter of the divine will servant of god um so jesus told her in in his writings to her uh that every two thousand years he renews the world and so he actually he said that every 2000 years he renews the world and the first the first 2000 renewal was the flood and he said that the flood happened about 2000 years after the beginning of time the the creation of adam and the fall of adam 2000 years later was the flood that was a huge event um and then 2000 years after that was when jesus came uh to the world and that was obviously a huge event a huge event and uh it opened up a whole new era um the era of redemption uh and then um 2000 years after that is the next renewal and that's where we are right about now in history um which is going to be the era of peace um the day that god rested as you can see because i kept with the number one through seven um it's the same pattern um yeah, so it's pretty exciting. And these things up here uh, are also things that Jesus <laughs> Jesus told to Louisa. Oh my goodness, this is so hard to say. Okay, the era of creation. Jesus told Louisa that he created the whole world in three fiats. And what that basically means, honestly, I don't really know what that means. It's kind of a mystery. But <laughs> what it basically means, what I can, with my understanding of it, it's like, so... When God said fiat, um, he was like outside of time and he like he created the whole eternity all in one all in one word. When he said fiat looks, let there be light. Um, but what Jesus had kind of revealed to Louisa um, more about that was like just the the detail of like how each member of the Trinity is. Um, intimately and specifically involved with different aspects of the work of creation with different um with different things um <laughs> and of course they're all it's a huge mystery we can't actually fully comprehend it because all three of them are always together operating as one all the time yet at the same time all three of them are distinct in in what they do and so so creation the fiat of creation jesus tells louisa was primarily the work of the father. Um, and that was basically, yeah, when he just created the whole world. Um, 
And then the fiat of redemption was primarily the work of Jesus because that's when he came down to earth to die on the cross to redeem us. Um, but the fiat of sanctification, and that that issued in a whole new era, right? Because like when Jesus came, I mean, time changed, like the way that we started labeling time changed from BC to AD. That's a whole new era. That's a huge, huge deal, right? Um, but Jesus tells Louisa that what's coming next, this era of sanctification is going to be an equally huge deal as when Jesus came to issue issue forth the era of redemption. Like this is a huge, huge, huge deal what we're going into right now. Um, it and this this work, as you may have guessed, is the the fiat of sanctification, which is primarily the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, and this day, this this day, this fiat, this era is going to be the era when when mankind finally returns back to the original order for which he was created when before Adam and Eve fell in the garden. And it's a state of profound union with God. Um, so yeah, ever ever since I realized um, that we were living right here and we were going into this glorious era of peace and that we were about to cross the threshold, um, over these tough times and into something new uh, and glorious, I have just experienced such a profound like fulfillment and purpose in life, um, unlike anything I've ever experienced before. Um, and I mean, that's been a pretty constant, actually not a pretty constant, that has been extremely constant for me these past four years, ever since I first heard about this. Like I've never doubted it one single time. It's only gotten deeper and deeper and deeper. And, I can say it is truly my entire life. Like, um, I've been reading Luisa's writings uh, over and over and over again, meaning that I've I've finished all 36 volumes one time and I'm starting over again. Um, yeah, for those who aren't aware, Jesus appeared to this woman, Luisa, the one the one who he told about this. And he, he told her a whole lot of things about... Um, he calls it the gift of living in his divine will. And that gift of living in his divine will is uh, what he refers to as the state of the state of union with God uh, that Adam and Eve had before they fell. So that state of just perfect human perfection that all throughout this time, like we've never actually been able to experience. Um, but in the writings that Jesus gave to Louisa, he actually teaches us the inside scoop of that intimacy and how to live that intimate life uh, with him. And yeah, she, she wrote for most of her life. She hated writing. She was really embarrassed by it. But uh, yeah, Jesus asked her to, and her her confessors asked her to, her priests that were watching over her asked her to. So she, so she did. Um, and yeah, I'm glad she did because <laughs> they've been, incredible for me. The writings that Jesus gave to Louisa were really meant for us. They were meant to to show us just how to enter back into that state of union that Adam and Eve had before they fell in the garden. Um, and yeah, actually, he tells her that no saint in the whole history of the world has ever been able to enter back into this union because it wasn't time yet. Um, he said that after Adam fell, he fell, fell so, so, so far. Um, and God had to teach mankind the ABCs. So the first step was teaching him the Ten Commandments. And then after he had learned that a little bit, now God had to teach mankind um, the how to read full sentences in a spiritual life. And that's when Jesus came in. He not only redeemed us, but he taught us taught us deeper, like insights about, about the law, which is really that the law is love. Uh, not just the, following the letter of the law. And then after Jesus, we have 2,000 years of, of saints and mystics and the growth of the church, the growth of the church, which Jesus planted as a seed uh, when he came on earth. And as we've been growing, we've been understanding more and more about God, about the spiritual life. Um, yeah, like mystics like Teresa of Avila, John of the Cross, Teresa the Little Flower, like do small things with great love. You can pick up a pen and save souls. Like, that kind of spirituality like was was matured as the church grew and jesus said that the the reason he picked louisa well first of all he picked her because he was she was the smallest soul that he could find the one who thought the least the least of herself the littlest 
tiniest one. But he also chose her and he put her in that time because the time that she was born in, the late 1800s, was the time when the church was finally mature enough to receive again uh, the gift of living in the divine will. And mankind was ready to enter back into the original order and purpose for which he was created by God. Um, and so Jesus told Louisa that she was the first, the first who was born in original sin. The Blessed Virgin Mary was a whole she was an exception. She was conceived immaculately. She was conceived with the privilege the privilege of living in the divine will perfectly. Um, but Louisa was the first one who was born in original sin to enter back into the gift of living in the divine will. And she opened the door for all of us to enter back into it as well. And so, um, yeah, going back to this picture, uh, you can say she was born like right, <laughs> right on this line. Like the era of peace was kind of beginning like with her. And but it hasn't spread out throughout the whole world yet. There will come a day when this when this day is in the seventh day is in full full blast. The sun is shining um, brightly. That every single soul in the entire world will be living in the divine will. It will be perfect harmony. There won't be division of like religion anymore and differences in so many things. We won't be fighting with each other anymore. We will all be united in God, and it will truly be the answer to the Our Father prayer. Um, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And that day is coming soon. But what Jesus told Louisa is that, so she she was the first, and then there will be a few more, and then it will there will be a few more, and they, they will spread it with each other, and it will grow bit by bit, like a grassroots kind of thing, like an under an underground kind of thing. Very similar to Jesus in his redemption, um, in the birth of the church. Uh, he said that, he, well, he actually, he said that these times were very similar to these times. Uh, Jesus is coming and the era of peace. Um, because, yeah, the whole world is awaiting a, a renewal. He said that the earth is in the similar conditions right now as, as it was when it was awaiting the advent of Christ to be born. Um, but, yeah, similar Similar as as the world is in a similar state right now as it was back then. Also, the message of the divine will and the living in the divine will will spread in a similar way that the message of Christ and the birth of the Christian church um, was back then. And it was not like all of a sudden, like at once, everybody in the world is Christian because obviously we're still not there yet. But like it was it was little by little. It was 12. It was 12 apostles total, like then sent forth to like convert the whole world like that. Um, it was little by little that, that the Jews were hearing about Jesus and like converting to Christianity and be baptized and all that. Um, and it will be a similar thing with the era of peace. Jesus tells Louisa this, and he says that, that it will be few, but those few will be like yeast to, uh, make the whole bread rise. Um, and so there are a few souls who are living in the divine will right now, and it is available for us to live in right now um, if we dispose ourselves to surrender utterly to God and we really want it. And the really, really exciting thing is that uh, the more souls begin to live in the divine will, they are really, they are speeding up the coming of the kingdom for the entire world because it is coming. It will happen that the whole world will be living in perfect peace, harmony, love, and joy. And it will be the same union with God that saints have in heaven all over the whole entire world. And it's going to be amazing. Um, but but the few souls who who know about it right now, the relatively few souls, like are the ones who are preparing the ground for it. Like we, the ones who are privileged to know about this, and I can assure you, like no matter who you are, no matter how unworthy you think you are, if you're hearing this message, this is for you. God has called you to be one of the first disciples, apostles of the kingdom, which is everything he has ever wanted, you know? Um, and it's just like the times of the apostles. It's just like the times when when this, the news of Jesus was just now spreading, because this is the very, very, very beginning of a new era. Um, the world doesn't know about it yet, but we the few who know about it, the few who are living this life get to be the herald of the new era all over the whole entire world. So it's the most exciting thing ever. So yeah, this video is primarily a video of hope, a message of glorious things that are coming and of excitement. Um, but yeah, it's also 
really, really hard, um, the times that we're going to be going through. So this glorious era of peace is coming, and it's going to be amazing, and it's going to be the best thing ever, and this is the most incredible time to be alive. Uh, but it's not going to be painless uh, to get to that point. Um, it's true that we're so privileged to be alive right now, but it is also true that it is going to hurt a lot uh, to live through the times that are ahead. Um, yeah, we are the bride of Christ, the people in the world. We are the mystical bride of Christ and the bride must resemble the bridegroom. Um, what happened to Jesus, what happened to Jesus was, um, really, really, really hard. Um, to a lot of people, even to his closest followers, it seemed like the end of the world. That's actually what we're going to have to go through too. Um, of course, not in the exact same way, but it's very true that the world, the church is about to go through her crucifixion where she will truly resemble her beloved Jesus. Um, and those are the times that we are heading into right now. Um, it's true that the the most glorious thing that has ever happened in this world is when Jesus rose from the dead. Uh, but that doesn't mean that the cross was easy. It doesn't mean that, uh, yeah, he was enjoying it <laughs> while it was happening. We really are going to, we're going to suffer. And these, these things we see happening in the world, they are only the very beginning of the birth pangs. Things are only going to get worse. Uh, but we can do it. <laughs> It's going to be okay. <laughs> For the relatively few of us who know what's coming, who know what's going on, uh, I believe that we are called to be beacons of joy, uh, beacons of light for our brothers and sisters who are stuck in the darkness, who can't see beyond what's coming, who really do feel like it's the end of everything. Um, we have been given the hope to know that God has something amazing planned and that, uh, yeah, we're called to walk with Jesus in his passion. We are called to undergo the crucifixion, even knowing at the same time that we will rise more glorious than ever. Um, I believe that the few of us who know what's coming are called when these times get really, really, really hard, to be the ones who sing and dance in the rain, uh, who play around during the storm, to help our brothers and sisters be less afraid of what's coming, to help them to have a deeper hope and a deeper trust in God. Um, and yeah, I don't think it's a coincidence that if you, if you are being shown what is happening, if you've heard of this, if you've heard of Louisa, if you've heard of the glorious era of peace that's coming and, and the end times and all of that, like you have been chosen by God to be a beacon of light in the world. Uh, yeah. The crucifixion is coming, but so is the resurrection. It won't be long. We're in this together. <laughs>